Hello and welcome back. In this episode I'm going to show you how you can seed some test users into our ASP.NET identity database. So what you're going to want to do inside our identity server project which also has ASP.NET identity integrated within open up the program.csharp file and you'll notice that from our previous episodes we've got this configuration db context set up and what we're going to want to do just beneath this is say using var user manager equals scope dot service provider dot get required service and this is going to be user manager of type identity user if you created a custom uh, bespoke user class that extends from identity user, then you'd specify that custom user class as the type instead of identity user. Now, within the uh, using statement, we can create ourselves a test user to insert into the database. So we're going to say var user equals new identity user, like so. We're going to give the user a username of simply test at example.com. Again, in a production environment, this would be a genuine uh, email address that you would have access to. And we can then specify that the email is test at example.com, like so. So that is the username defined in the constructor. And then we also specify the email of test at example.com. So if you wanted to, you could uh, leave the username as just test or a name, for example. It doesn't have to be an email address, um, but I've kept the two matching for the purposes of this uh, example, this episode. So now that we've got this user created, again, if you had a custom user object, you might have additional properties such as first name, last name, etc. What we will do is we will say a user manager dot create async. And you can see the first argument is the user and the second argument is going to be the password. And so what we're going to do is paste in an example password here that meets the requirements of ASP.NET identity. So it's got a capital letter, it's got lowercase letters, it's got numbers and it's got a symbol. Again, depending on the uh, password requirements that you configured during the setup of ASP.NET Identity, you may need to adjust that password as necessary. Then what we can do is just uh, say wait at the end to wait for that asynchronous operation to complete. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say user manager dot, and we're going to say add claims async. Now this will take the uh, user as the first parameter and then it will take a list of claims as the second parameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to say new claim and JWT claim types dot, and we're going to say family name, and that's uh, last name, Clark, the family name if you like, that's uh, the same thing as last name. And we can create another claim in here, and we will say JWT claim types dot given name, and that is equivalent to the first name. And so I use my first name there of Thomas, like so. So of course, if you had first name and last name defined as properties on your user object, then you would set those up uh, here, like so. However, we can also add those as claims and identity server will then add those claims to uh, access tokens, uh, JWT bearer tokens that we get back when we authenticate with identity server. So we've got the family name claim and the given name claim. We have our user set up and we have the code set to create that user in the database. The last thing I do on the bottom here is just configure the uh, wait, much like we've done for the create async. And with that set up like that, we can now run the identity server application. Give it a few moments there to build and then run the identity server project. And as you can see, this now opens up the identity server in the background. And if we come into our database, and if we take a look at the ASP.NET users table, you can see here that we have our user test at example.com in our database. You can see there the password hash, that's the hash of the password that we defined 
just there, like so. So the password is obviously stored as a sort of hash encrypted within the database rather than storing the actual password itself. And you can see we then have other properties such as phone number if we optionally uh, gave a phone number. And you can see various other configuration settings like two-factor authentication, etc. So we can see our user ID there of 95887. And if we take a look in our user claims, we can see user ID 95887 has a family name of Clark and a given name of Thomas. And identity server can be configured to include uh, these custom claims in the JWT bearers that it issues to client applications when they request a token from the token endpoint. So that's shown you uh, briefly how you can seed the ASP.NET identity uh, database tables with test users, which is perfect really for when you're developing locally and you want to create uh, one or more just test users in the database to be able to have a play around with. So I hope you found this episode useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.